What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Breaking Night with BL. I'm BL. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hello. Hey, welcome back to Breaking Night with BL, episode number 15. I'm sorry, I've been away a couple of weeks. I've been working on some major things in the movie business, working on this graffiti movie. I'm going to tell you all a lot about that soon. Trust me. I'm including everybody. We haven't had a graffiti movie in decades. A real New York graffiti movie? Hollywood is not ready for that. I'm going to do it myself. Y'all are going to be included. This is going to be an amazing project. But I've been away the last couple of weeks working on some big stuff. And I come back and I got all these packages here. And I'm like, ever since Coop, shout out Coop, TA7. Ever since Coop sent me a package of some treats, I got people just sending me treats. What are you going to do? I love treats. Who doesn't love treats? Let's go through some of this stuff here. What do you got here? Got this big ass box here. Wow. Unbelievable, man. Shout out to my boy Treadle. Treadle, original TMR dude, man. One of Bayside's finest. I know on the highways you've seen those TREs and the ZZs. You know you definitely have. There you go, man. Live and direct. Treadle, just sending treats, man. Treadle, TMR, man. Wow. You are a fucking gentleman, man. Thank you, dude. I'm going to use this to send out packages. But this right here, this is a gem. Thank you, brother. Unbelievable, man. I guess people are watching and they're starting to feel like, hey, let me send BL some stuff. Because, you know, you never know. What do we got here? We got something from Timmy Tilapia. <laughs> Bottom feeders. Oh, I know this is going to be a treat. I probably know who this is. I guarantee you I know who this is. Oh, man. You know what's a treat when it's wrapped. It don't smell like fish, so it's got to be something good. And yes, it is, kid. Shout out to Hojo, man. Hojo and Bao? Man. My dude's right there, dude. Great people, man. What, oh my God, we got a map here. Wow. Bow and Hojo, man. Let me tell you something. Hojo's a beast and a complainer. Guy's been yelling at me for months. Change your background set, BL. You got all these canvases. What are you doing with them, man? Change your set. Are we good now? Now I got these treats. I'm going to put a little stuff on there. I'm going to get some special people on there. This is what I love, man. Collaborative treats. Things that you can just do with the boys. Keep this in the collection, man. Thank you, Hojo. You're the man, dude. Unbelievable. Let's see. A couple weeks ago was my birthday. I invited a few friends for my birthday to come hang out. Yo, shout out to DSR. DSR came through with a nice sticker pack. And a sticky pack. If you know what I'm talking about. But yo, pin, pack, DSR, man. Love that dude, man. Great guy. Had a couple of friends. My buddy Richie surprised me. My friend Pete from Queens came up. Had all my friends at some place. And my buddy Donnie, who used to write Germ. G-E-R-M came and blessed me with a box of treats his own vintage box of treats look at me germ piece connecticut kid connecticut graffiti man i met germ and all these dudes a long time ago when my parents first moved to connecticut over 30 years ago that's how i met eros shout out eros blt crew we're gonna go through some of these because this is vintage right here. Look at this. Can Control Magazine original. Look at this. This is probably one of the first Subway Art books ever. Look at this thing. 
Look at this treat. Wow. Dude, Donnie, you're the man, bro. I'm going to have to go through this step by step. And what is this? This is a hacky sack bag filled with caps, man. You're the man, dude. Love vintage caps. We're going to get into this box a lot more. Too much going on. Let's see, what do we got here? I have a feeling I know what this is. And I want to say super thank you, man. Unbelievable. I don't watch many podcasts. I don't listen to a lot of bullshit because I don't follow the fucking nonsense when it comes to New York graffiti. You know, there's only so many people I can listen to or enjoy learning from. And there's not a lot. There's not a lot of people. Very few people are, are, are teaching me things that I don't know. Most people are talking about things I know, and it dumbs me down. But let's get into this package here because I'm telling you, I have a feeling I know what this is. If you could put a little more tape on this next time, it would be helpful, man, because... so many treats that you can get in the mail this is by far a treat I've been waiting for and Aaron thanks for delivering it bro shout out A1s I know he's super cool with RD and RD obviously sent me some treats we got some stickers I got a t-shirt here wow a whole care bag full of stickers and maps. Wow, man. If you're all not watching RD's show, you're not paying attention to nothing, man. Let me tell you something. RD, true graffiti legend. What a sick treat, man. Wow, dude. This is definitely going up on the wall in my collection, man. Definitely somebody I respect so much in graffiti. This guy was killing things from day one, and he's still out there doing it now. Y'all can learn a lot from a person like this, man. And be careful, because if we don't like you, I'll catch you in the yard, fucking smack you right in the back of the neck with this thing. Right here, baby. Wow, man. Thank you, RD. That is just crazy, man. Shirt, everything, man. Wow. Unbelievable, man. Let me open this up and go through a couple of treats because you don't get many care packages like this from where I'm from. Wow. Neos, RDs. Dude, unbelievable, man. DE3. Shout out DE3. Shout out 357, man. Wow, dude. Sick RDs. I love the vintage maps. Here we go. Let's check this out. Let's open up one of these maps, see what we got here. Wow. This is what I'm talking about. Wow, man. What a treat. Nothing more I love than a collab map. Thank you, brother. Man, you don't know, have no idea how much I appreciate what you're doing, man, for YouTube and the graffiti culture, neither. Let me tell you something, man. The world needs a lot more people that have been through it that are talking about it. A lot of people have not been through it, and they're talking about it like they were there in the shining hours of when real graffiti, man. I'm talking about, like, beef errors, and, like, you had to fight every day. You get robbed for your paint. You had to break in somewhere to write. You couldn't just walk up to a wall in Bushwick or Brooklyn and be like, hey, man, look at what I'm doing. Isn't this beautiful? That's cool and all. I got something here, man, that means the world to me. And I see stuff like this.
makes me so excited, but it also makes me sad. I lost my boy Doro when he was 15 years old back in 1986. And when we were kids, AT and KP from WR were everything. They were killing stuff in our neighborhood when we were around. Everything. I've been in touch with AT. Shout out to you, my brother. Complete gentleman, man. Sent me this package. And like, I don't even really want to get into it and open it. Because, I mean, this is just a priceless piece for me. I could see Doro right now in heaven smiling that AT... Is putting up WDD. A crew that me and Doro started way back in 1984, 1985. And once he passed in 1986, I just kept things going. AT, man. Look at this, man. Doro, WDD. Damn, man. AT, man, you don't even know, man. You ain't getting half the props that you deserve. This is why we do stuff like this. It's important to spotlight people who were a part of other people's movements. Y'all are watching like street artists and going to like corny gallery shows, looking at like fruity things. That's not the business when I was a kid. When I was a kid, you were doing it illegally, man. And you had to get your name out. And if you weren't, you were nobody to even be talked about. Wow, man. AT, what a gentleman, man. I got to paint with him one day, man. That would be a, that would be a dream. Matt, I know you're looking, baby. Look at this, kid. You made it, man. Jesus Christ. Unbelievable, brother. But as always, I got to shout out the homie Swiss Precise, Mikey Pens, for the Break at Night logo. That was a super sick treat. And I'm loving promoting everything using this object. But I got to give a super shout out to Finster on Instagram. Finster took it amongst himself, who's an amazing digital creator online. He sent me this logo that my boy Pens did and Swiss Precise did. And he put a little spin on it. He added my B from my BL and he added the G from DG. Dude, this is fucking awesome. Look at this. This is ingenuity at its best. This is treat street. This is people who look at something and put a little change on it. Means everything to me. I know DG's like, man, now I'm a part of your logo. <laughs> you know that DG laugh? <laughs> we came a long way, man. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Zim in this episode. Cause that's important. But first I want to ask, are y'all following my boy Breeze? Breeze has been just killing him with the iPad. Totally crushing it. He's doing pieces for all of our passed away people. He's doing burners. He's just blessing the internet. Look at some of this stuff, man. Breeze, what a talent, man. This guy's like magic with a digital pen. Look, at this. he did this Doro. He did a Dega, he did a Zim, Mag, SK. Unbelievable, man. You gotta take your hat off to people like this. Because honestly, people like this are helping keep memories alive. If y'all don't see that, y'all don't know. Oh, this guy passed away? Oh, maybe you never heard of him. But this is the part of teaching graffiti history. You need to know all these people that were involved in a movement and who introduced who to who and who inspired who. That's the bottom line here. And that's all I want to do. Just spread everything. Shout out Breeze, man. No Breeze a really long time. And truth of the matter is, after meeting him and being around people like Zim and Old Drum Park and hanging out by South Sweet Shop, Zim an unbelievable person, man. I got this canvas that Zim made me. When I was doing hip hop music, Zim made me this cold heat canvas. And to me, it's everything. Like, he had a heart of gold, and he was definitely somebody who was around a long time. A lot of people may notice he was Zim was a carpenter by trade. 
But he, when he was a kid, he went to school at Art and Design, where most of the popular graffiti art kid went. But coming from the boroughs and going into Art and Design in Manhattan, he got really close with Reese, A-OK. -okay. Shout out, Reese. Zim's been representing A-OK -okay forever. That's his thing. And I actually went to a show one time, and Zim wanted to go see Reese. And I got a picture of these two together. And to me, Zim was just so vibrant in that spotlight. But Zim was unbelievable, man. Once he started running around with DG, these guys were going on to the Bronx with Nick 707, doing a lot of pieces. I have a lot of pictures of little pieces that he was doing with Nick and DG was doing like a JA piece and putting up all the brothers. Definitely look at this picture of Tracy 168 and Zim. That day we were in the Bronx. I got the footage, man. I showed you on the Tracy episode. I was documenting everything. I got this one sick picture of Tracy 168, Nick 707, Zim AOK, -okay, and Slave TC5. I got these four guys to pose by the wall, and I heard from Nick 707's brother that he wanted to use this picture for the book, but he didn't know who the picture belonged to. I've been out documenting stuff forever, man. It's very important to me. And Zim, I showed you guys before, he was a creative innovator. What can you not say about this guy? After I started doing treat street things and he always was into drawing and creating, he got bit with the bug and started designing like hats, and jackets, and shirts, making more canvases, working on drawings. And it was something that just, it motivated me because he definitely felt the love to create art and kept doing it. Here's a picture of him I got when we went to go see TL. Shout out to TL. With his hat and his jacket. Just styling. But DG and Zim made this train canvas, I told y'all. Here's a couple of pictures of DG and Zim working on this. Zim built this. Zim is a carpenter by trade. Okay? And he definitely 100% built this, like, a 2D, 3D canvas train. He wrapped it, and he had DG come over, and him and Zim did these two pieces on it. And I remember when he was invited to have this at a show downtown. I couldn't tell you how excited Zim was to display this super sick thing that nobody's ever seen nothing like this before. Are you kidding me? This thing is a train. It was like as big as a train. It was not like a little canvas. This thing was like 20 foot wide by like 10 feet tall. And the, when we got to this gallery, when we were hanging this thing, helping him, it's by far one of the greatest moments I've ever seen Zim so excited, so happy in his element, and so well-deserved. I got some footage from Zim. Because after DG had passed away, and I told you I found all the stuff that he gave me to help carry his legacy, when DG passed away, Zim did the same thing. He gave me all of his pictures, gave me his footage, gave me everything. And I'm asking myself, who the hell am I going to leave all my shit to? Who's going to carry the torch? But seriously, man. Look at some of this footage of Zim. We go back like, like God. How far back do we go? You think about that. How far do you
New York magazine uh -huh. playing all well, the newspapers back then. Who was doing that? Nobody. We did that. So now it's all this, and everybody taking credit for it, but the guys who actually did it are all like me. I'm going to see this shit out like, you know what I mean? And this brother here, I need that shit. I'm going back. This one's out of time. I'm going back. 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 I'm
Canvas and how many people were there and his family was there, his wife was there, his kids were there. It was unbelievable. And shout out to Zim's son. I've been in touch with Zim's son on Instagram and I'm telling you, it just made me want to talk about these people more and let people understand the kind of heart these people had. These people were amazing artists, but just good people. This is why we all had a click. Like Deck, DG, Zim, Meg, Breeze, we were ball breakers and we just loved to have fun, man. And we go out, we lived on the edge. We were doing things, man. Kids these days are not doing. Y'all playing in video games. Y'all weren't doing what we were doing. And that to me was huge. You know, I do want to say I'm noticing, I'm starting to see a lot of gallery shows mixed with like DJs and rap groups and performances. And I love it to death. I mean, I think this should have been done so long ago that you're having a gallery show, you're inviting DJs or like rappers and industry people to come. Wait, wait a second. I actually was the first one to do that. I had a treat street gallery show down at Lovecraft in you know downtown, and I invited my brother Craig G to come and have an album listening party, and that's exactly what it was. Shout out to my boy Rise. Rise was there with his camera, filmed the whole entire thing. And this was to me what I was doing in the graffiti industry and being in hip hop, being in music. How do we collide these worlds? And now I see everybody's doing an art gallery with a DJ or a performer. And I think it's great. I think it's great. You know, my phone works, so you know, you ever want me to come through and bless you guys with some real treats? You let me know. I'm always available. Here's footage of that day. Uh, this is this is recording my voice. Yes. You can hear my voice, right? Yes. Oh, that sucks for you. This is the treat street. The treat of look at the treats. Exactly. There's a lot of treats. There's a lot of treats in the tree. The, the tree wave is just just started. Nice. It's pretty sick. Sick. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of. Uh, I forgot how many. Looking around at them, I just some of them that I just we did. And I just totally I forgot the they existed. Too, but this is actually footage, so we gotta let them know what the fuck is up. Big rise on the camera. FTR on this motherfucker. Treat Street up in this BIH, BL, Den, Sav, Rides, Germs, Amuse, Cease. 
pace, the list goes on and on. Classic shit real quick. Yeah. 
We'll see. Now, for my next number, I oh. have to return to... Oh, the brother. Perhaps... How many people fuck with that old school hip hop? Yeah. Let's see. When I say real, y'all say hip hop. Real, 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 real. She hits it, don't stop. Unbelievable time. Unbelievable. And you know what? I'm not dead yet. That's my new hashtag. BL's not dead yet. I have a lot more to do in my life. I'm in a very happy, comfortable space. I got my own situation going. I'm working on a lot of amazing things. I'm away from a lot of haters and aggravation and people that just don't want to see you do well. But the important thing is, I'm doing what I love and it makes me happy. And you should be doing whatever makes you happy. If you're not, stop living for this fucking jerk off on Instagram who posts the same photos 40 fucking 7,000 times. It's not fun. Not fun at all. But we're gonna talk a lot about all this shit more. I mean, I got so many things I've been working on. Hey, let's check this out. Let me get my exacto knife set out. Shout out to RB. My boy Bobby blessed me with a super sick treat exacto knife set. Cause you know, I work on a lot of stuff. You know, you gotta cut out stuff for canvases and all that other stuff and it's important. But this right here is my next little venture. Louis Vuitton sneakers. Got my Air Force Ones. I bought a used Louis bag on eBay. Not rocket science, people. I bought some brand new shiny Air Force Ones. I'm going to take the laces out. I'm going to make my stencils on here. I'm going to use the Louis bag and I'm going to decorate the hell out of this. I'm going to change the color of the laces. 
And I'm going to show you more about that process. Because I learned to do a lot of things myself. You know? I got my E60. This is bendable glue. This is the glue used on sneakers because it flexes. Okay? It doesn't turn into a rock where you can't move it. This flexes. So when you put the Louis material on there, this is going to go on there perfectly. You take a little brush, you put it on the spots where you want on the sneaker, and then you put it on the back of your stencil. You put it on there, and you're going to have magic. Can't wait to work on that, man. I love custom stuff. I bought some other sneakers the other day. I'm working on these Hulk sneakers for Comic-Con in Connecticut. Because I'm just keeping busy. I'm plowing through. I'm just creative juices, just working on things, doing things, and keeping it moving. And not many things inspire me. But I do see, th do see things that I do appreciate from people. Shout out to the Graffiti Wanderer on YouTube. You know, I must have found his page months ago. Just wandering through YouTube, seeing what kind of graffiti content was on there. And I noticed there's a bunch of niches that were missing. But I see that he is just totally out there filming things and being out there. And he obviously has a lot of historic freaking history. I just saw this thing that he did on Five Points. Go on YouTube and look up the Graffiti Wanderer. Unbelievable. Doing these nice documentaries, man. Definitely informing people about New York history and graffiti. If you don't know about Five Points, you just saw it on the news and probably don't know the history of it. Shout out to Topaz. Shout out to Nick One. Shout out to Mears. Shout out to my boy Fun Junk. We used to hang out over there hard, man. That was like our playground. It was just... Painting, smoking weed, and drinking, and enjoying the day. Unbelievable. And these days, you know, I've been just definitely enjoying life. Shout out to my boy Brad. My boy Brad has been friends of mine for 30-something years. And we're nothing but good friends. But he turned me on to like a different genre of music. Because, you know, coming from New York, we're all brainwashed listening to the same fucking bullshit. Whatever they play on the radio, you got to listen to. Get serious radio. You can at least pick certain channels. I like to go on YouTube and select what the hell I want. Because not a lot of CDs and albums and mixes no more do it for me. But Brad turned me on to this group called the Dirty Heads. Shout out to the Dirty Heads. This is a band group from California. They do like ska, hip hop. Reggae sounding stuff Sublime I know everybody heard of Sublime Love those guys man But Dirty Heads These guys are fucking rapping And doing songs that are better than most of rappers now Trying to talk shit And this is something that I love to get away from Their vibe is just smoking weed And chilling out And enjoying life They have great songs Shout out to Slightly Stupid, another sick band from California. Oration, Stick Figure. If you don't know about this stuff, man, please search Dirty Heads on YouTube and listen to some of that stuff, man. If it don't put you in a good mood, yo, turn it off and forget it. But I could listen to this stuff and smoke and just vibe out all day and enjoy my life. That I appreciate. These guys are coming to Connecticut, actually, in two months. Dirty heads and slightly stupid. I can't wait to see these fucking guys. Shout out, Swiss Precise. Hook me up, man. I appreciate you, brother. With that being said and done, I want to wrap up this episode with a little bit of take care of yourself. If you're not taking care of yourself, who's doing it? Look at your phone. Anybody checking on you to make sure you're doing all right? Asking if you need any help or anything? That's important. People that are in your life every day are the most important things. But don't be afraid to cut somebody off, kid. They call me Johnny Scissorhands. I'll cut you right the fuck off. Not that I need you to do anything for me. But I do appreciate friendship and support. And if you're not supporting me, I'm not supporting you. Thank you for tuning in to episode 15, Breaking Night with BL. 
I'm going to be back real soon next week with a bunch more treats, man. Treats. Want to see treats? Look at this. One of the first treats that I made at Treat Street. Look at this thing. BL, Den, Dessa, and Catch. When I started putting Mod Podge on things, I was finding everything under the sun to put on there. Look at this. So shiny. Treats. Yeah. Want to see one of the first things we made at Treat Street? Look at this. Canvas board. We got Pace. We got Cease. Catch. Den. What do you got here, man? Treats. We're going to show a lot more treats, man. Because trust me, I'm flooded with stuff here. I got bags of stickers and stencils and art. And I got canvases to show things that we've made. I'll show you how we made them and what's coming up next.